Rising income inequality has serious consequences for South Africa's children and for the country's own future. This is one of the key concerns raised in the South African Child Gauge 2012. Now joining us from Cape Town to discuss the report is Catherine Hall. She's the lead editor of this year's report. A very good evening to you, Catherine. Now that uh, statement of rising inequality be having serious consequences on uh, children as well as uh, South Africa's uh, future, that's a pretty uh, big uh, statement there. Could you kindly break down what do you mean by this? Well, um, the issue of rising inequality is not specific to children. Um, we have a long history of inequality. Of course, it goes back to the days of apartheid. Um, but much to people's surprise, it turns out that inequality has not reduced since the end of apartheid. It's in fact started to rise. Um, and children are particularly affected by this in that they are, tend to be concentrated in smaller households. So what the gauge is doing is amidst an array of work on poverty inequality in South Africa, everybody's trying to understand it and think about what are the strategies to overcome it. Um, we're looking specifically at the situation of children. So w what are you essentially saying is that uh, policymakers right now are not doing enough in order to fight uh, this surge of inequality? Well, in fact, it's, a very, it's an opportune time, and it's partly why we are producing the gauge now, because there's huge political will around this. We have a national development plan, which is a kind of a guiding framework, a vision for South Africa over the next period. Um, incidentally, uh, the vision ends, the, the end point of the vision is 2030, which mm -hmm. is exactly 18 years from now, the lifetime of a child until, um, from age of birth until they become an adult. So we, yes, there are areas where there has not been enough done about inequality. Mm -hmm. There are some huge structural issues which need to be dealt with. I mean, it's driven primarily by the labour market, uh, by high rates of unemployment which are persisting, uh, and by huge wage differ differentials um, amongst those who do work. Uh, and of course children by definition are dependent on adults uh, and on income that adults can bring into households. Uh, so while this work is going on, there are also some things that we can be doing if we start thinking about how does one intervene in the cycles of inequality, what do we need to be start doing for children now? Indeed, uh, when you look at some of the interventions that the government has made, we've got uh, child grants and then we've got a uh, school of feeding schemes. Uh, in your view, do you mm -hmm. see these interventions not being adequate? Some of them are very successful. The, ch the child grant, in fact, the social grant system as a whole, which includes chi child support grants, foster child grants, care dependency grants for disabled children and then for adults, disability grants, old age pensions, it's an incredibly successful program and child support grants alone reach well over, uh, over 11 million children every month in, in South Africa. Um, but there are still questions about how that can be expanded. They've, they, have, they have great consequences for children. We know that children who receive child support grants, the, the receipt of that grant is associated with uh, better educational outcomes, better nutritional outcomes, better health outcomes, and these in turn can start to help put in, to interrupt that cycle of intergenerational transmission of poverty. Um, so given that they are working so well, that they are administratively easy, uh, that they reach large numbers of children, how can we expand on this in order to have greater effect? And some of the ways are simply reaching those children who still are not on the grant system, although they're eligible. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, the closer you get to universal uptake, the more difficult it is. So it's really a matter of investigating what are those blockages. Um, they're there specifically for young, uh, particularly for young children. Um, mm -hmm. And then also perhaps thinking about the size of grants, which are certainly reducing poverty, but not really big enough to make a big dent on inequality. Indeed, when you look at uh, tr uh, the, the Minister of the Presidency, uh, Trevor Manuel, in his uh, National uh, Planning Committee, he he's also pro uh, has uh, plans on uh, focusing on children. He cites the improvement of uh, nutrition. But when you look at the plans and uh, the steps are being taken, do you find that there is a clear direction on, of how we are going to get, uh, uh, to get, th get there? Well, we have, we have very good policies. Mm -hmm. we, we do have good policies. We have good plans. 
but uh, there's been quite a gap between uh, the policy development policies and implementation. So we have service delivery prob problems. For instance, there's a school nutrition program which could theoretically reach large numbers of children. Through schools, we have almost universal attendance in schools, so it's a very good way of reaching children of school age. Um, but it's been beset by service delivery problems. So now the question turns from policy, how do we start to addressing some of those service delivery issues. So your um, a survey as well showed that uh, they are, um, children are more likely than adults to be living in the poorest households. That's about 20% uh, mm. of the poorest households. When I look at that figure, I would think that these households are in the rural areas. Would you say that government is not doing enough to improve the situation in the rural areas? Yes, well, you're absolutely right. Uh, just also to um, to clarify that it's not, in fact, our survey; it's our analysis of um, national household survey data. So it's it's the data that's released by Statistics South Africa, which is mm -hmm. the official national survey. Um, and yes, we find children overrepresented in the poorest households. And you're quite right; um, it's largely about where they're located. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a really critical issue. This is something that has not been changed, uh, that has not changed sufficiently. We still have a, a spatial map which really resembles the old apartheid map. Um, mm -hmm. Remember, we have a history of independent homelands that were established for poor African, uh, black African people who were denied South African citizenship and relocated to homelands. Um, and these were largely, uh, primarily, mm -hmm. old people, women and children. And we still have large numbers of children living there. Um, these are areas that have been historically and strategically deprived of resources. They've been underdeveloped. They are, no, they are not job opportunities. And although there have been massive in improvements in service delivery, um, we are still seeing huge service backlogs. Uh, large numbers of children who literally are dependent on collecting water from streams, uh, no sanitation, all of these things that take their toll on children's health. So it's also time for a think about what is the future that we envisage for this country. If we are to have a large rural population, how do we, how do we cre create an environment in which people can live and develop healthily and what opportunities are there for them in future?